Right, let's take stock. So we've already figured out the math to calculate an orbit, but in order to land our ship, we need to get its current orbit. Our command module has unfortunately been destroyed, but all of the ship's subsystems communicate over a bus protocol that can be accessed from any control panel. And all the sensors and engines are still functional, so with a little programming, we should be able to connect to this thing. Because I'm using Kerbal Space Program to simulate our spacecraft for this project, I can use a plugin called KRPC to get real-time data about the spacecraft and its environment. Before I do anything else though, I'm going to open up Kerbal Space Program, make sure the KRPC server is started, and that the auto-connect is turned on. Now onto the software. Let's create a class called Autopilot and import KRPC. In our init function, we'll connect to the KRPC server. It's just a simple call to krpc.connect. As a first test to make sure everything is working, we're just going to print out the name. The connect function returns a connection object that has lots of different objects we can interface with. The important one right now is the vessel object. We can get the name just by calling vessel.name. Now let's run everything. Nice, it seems to work. Properly got the name of our ship, the Martian Titan. Now let's get to the good stuff. We'll create two functions. One to get the position and velocity, and one to print it out just as a test. The KRPC vessel object has functions for both of these. Both functions require a reference frame, though. There are lots of different reference frames we can get our position and velocity relative to, but the one we're most interested in is the unrotating reference frame of the planet. First we have to get the object of the planet, the Python object representing the planet can be accessed simply by using vessel.orbit.body. We can then get the reference frame of that body with the attribute orbital reference frame. Let's run the program with the new print function. We'll run it once more to make sure it updates. The way KRPC works is that whenever an attribute is accessed, it automatically pulls the latest reading from Kerbal Space Program. No additional function calls required. We almost have everything we need to try plotting this data using the simulate orbit class we made last episode. There are two more pieces of information though, the mu value of the planet and its radius. Luckily, both of these are packaged with KRPC. Both values are a part of the celestial body object. In KRPC, mu is just called the gravitational parameter and the radius is the equatorial radius. Right, let's import our class and create an instance. We'll add our current position and velocity and plot it. Doesn't look too crazy. You might notice a few changes since the last episode. I've added a small red dot where our spacecraft currently is. And a nice black background to represent space. Our ship also has a simple map we can view to make sure this plot makes sense. Oh, nice, those look great. Dead on by my eye. Well, there is a small problem, the fact that our orbit is super high and we don't really have a ton of fuel. We figured out how to connect to our spacecraft and get real-time data, but this plot is telling us that we have a really high orbit. If we want to land this tub, we're going to need to perform what's called an air braking maneuver to slow ourselves down a bit. But in order to do that, we're going to have to predict how hitting the atmosphere will change our orbit. In the next episode, we're going to add atmospheric drag to our orbital model so we can model air braking. Thanks for watching.